Refreshing. This month is on the 25th of, uh, of the month at 6 p.m. on a Sunday night. It's our time that we come together and pray and worship the Lord. And there's no agenda. We just show up. And He shows up. It's been really good. I, I think I've only missed one or two in the last four or five years that we've been doing these. Um, 
I had to rearrange the church picnic, as you know. It will now be on Saturday, May 1st at the Harbor Heights Park Pavilion. If you don't know where that is, you can just check with one of us and we'll let you know. And uh, it's from 11 to 3. And next week we'll send around a sign-up sheet and you can put all the goodies that you're going to bring on there. Lots of goodies. Amen. Like really goody goodies. <laughs> <laughs> like your best goodies. <laughs> so what will you sign? Will you have to sign? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, we're going to redo it. Okay, praise the Lord. Is, is, is there anything else? My wife's not here. She usually reminds me. Oh, if you're in the need of prayer for healing, uh, you can call the healing rooms and we'll make you a date. We're here on Tuesdays from 1030 to 1. And the phone number there or the email is there. You can send it to us. Okay? All right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So let's, um, let's do something religious like we take up an offering. <laughs> oh gosh, that's just a joke. Don't get all flushed. <laughs> yeah, there's two guys out in the boat. They've been out in the boat, lost at sea for over a, two weeks, and they, you know, they were trying to figure out what to do. And uh, one guy said, "Well, let's pray." The other guy says, "No, let's just take up an offering." <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. No, we don't make a big deal out of money around here. Oh, guess what? Remember last week we took up a resurrection seed offering? Remember that? Boy, you guys are just. Um, we took up over $8,000. church gives gives money too they yes. are very faithful with that yes. well, thank you all yes. for giving yes. amen yes. you know i didn't have that plan last sunday you know it just happened um i didn't tell you a week ahead did i no i didn't tell you that didn't tell you two weeks ahead did i i didn't get the drums rolling oh we're going to take up a big summer oh so run, 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 run. it gets you all excited no you just did it <laughs> called spontaneous inspiration of the Holy One. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Lord. So I was just, you know, kind of milling around waiting on you all to get your checks made out. 
the Healer's House Family Church. And if you want to make a cash offering, you can use the envelope in the back of the chair there. When you fill out the envelope, please don't just put your first name. Put your first John. Well, gosh, who's John? Okay, no, John so-and-so or Joe or Sally or whoever. Put your full name and address and, you know, be kind to your brother so he doesn't have to search. Amen. <laughs> Father, we thank you for all things that are good and that are plentiful. And we thank you, Lord, that seed sown in the ground is tomorrow's harvest. Yes. And today, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we believe that seed sown in good ground where the works of Jesus and the love of God is being shown, we know that it is fertile soil. Keep us humble, Lord. Help us to always put you first in our lives. In finances, in assets, in giving, in receiving, in everything we do, Father, we put you first. We give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody agreed, said amen. 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 Go ahead and receive the offering, friend. Thank you, Lord. Last week we talked to, uh, talked to you on Resurrection Sunday about how God had redeemed us by his love. And uh, spoke intensely on love and loving one another and how Jesus loved us. Anything that you study, any subject or principle that you study in the scripture, God has already laid the example through Jesus. See, God can't tell you to pray unless Jesus has set the example for you to pray. Okay? God can't command you to love one another unless he's taught us how he loved us. So God has already prepared us through evidentiary, evidential scripture, evidence in the scripture showing us how he loved us first. And today I want to talk to you about redemption again and the redemption of healing. Because healing is a part and a major principle in scripture that Jesus took our pains and carried our sorrows. He took the wounds in his body for your healing. Amen. Amen. And by his stripes, you are healed today. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Doesn't take much to convince this church. You wouldn't be here if you didn't believe it. So I, I do want to talk to you today about a specific issue. Uh, we are redeemed by his healing virtues. Amen. 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 The book of Hebrews in the King James, uh, I will use the King James and the Passion translations both. Uh, the King James in Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So that therefore, if I read that scripture, that means I can go back and look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and see that Jesus healed the multitudes, he healed individuals who came to him. So if that scripture bears witness, then he's yesterday the healer, he's today the healer, and he will be my healer tomorrow and forever. Okay? Doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. The church has to come to a recognition that he's not only the Savior, he is the healer, and he is the deliverer. He is the one who blesses us. He has left us an inheritance, and he wants us to live in the fullness of the blessing. Amen. So, <clears throat> this morning, you might have symptoms. You might have infirmity. And we want to do the best we can to help you today get through this. And once and for all, be healed and made whole when you leave this house this morning. Amen. 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 See, we're going after your healing today. Amen. Amen. Now you need to pay a special attention because at the end of the teaching this morning, we're going to be laying hands on people and we're going to believe in God that your healing is going to be taking place. You'll get your miracle today. Yes. Amen. 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 
And I don't say that wondering if it's going to happen. I say that knowing that it is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, how do you know that? I've lived 34 years in the kingdom, and I've seen way too much to doubt it. I've seen God take a, a dying man, literally on his deathbed, wheeled him in, dying of AIDS, I mean that big around, body shriveled up, in one time prayer, totally healed, goes out and eats a full meal that very night, and in two weeks puts on enough weight to make him look whole again. And he's still alive today. So you can't tell me God is not a healer. Amen. He is a healer. And that's not just, I mean, I, I, we've been doing this for 22 years. And I've seen miracles after miracles after miracles take place because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, we got our elders here, Larry and Betty. They've been fighting it for two weeks or three weeks. I don't know how long. They're here today. Amen. Totally healed. Totally restored. Amen. Amen. Overcome. Overcome. And, and still alive and well. He got a fresh anointing. Amen. A fresh Amen. assignment. Yes. Yeah. Hallelujah. A new assignment. <laughs> They're not retired, they're refired. <laughs> Fresh oil from heaven. Falling on them now in Jesus' name. Filling them back up with strength. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Bible evidence proves that Jesus never said to anyone, No, it's not my will to heal you. Go and suffer a little bit more. I don't know what kind of Bible you got, but it's not mine. No, the Bible says he healed all who came to him in the name of Jesus. In fact, in Psalms 145, verses 8 and 9, it says, The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Psalms 91, verses 15 and 16. says, you shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Say that with me. Long life will I satisfy him. Woo! And show him my salvation. Woo we got some Psalms 90 wonders in here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now through Christ, Christ has never stopped healing. The church did. Well, are we the hands and feet? Are we the mouthpiece? Are we the arms? The legs? The trunk, the body of Christ. We're the fullness of Christ. Yep. Amen. In the earth today. <laughs> Amen. Well, Jesus didn't stop healing. The church might have stopped healing. Yeah. But not us. Amen. No. No, we're not going to stop healing. We're not going to stop believing. The commandment is to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Yeah. And with the gospel goes healing, deliverance, salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let's go to Luke 7. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So, <clears throat> someone who is uh, borderline on blood pressure on the internet, you're watching right now, and your blood pressure level is up borderline to high. Your cholesterol levels are up. So God is just going to send you the anointing across that internet right now. I just want you to put your hands right there on the screen where you're at. And I want you to receive your healing in your blood system. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We send the word. We send the word healed. Healed by the stripes of Jesus. The anointing of God is going through that internet right now and touching everyone. In Jesus' name. 
Alyssa, put your hands on that internet right now on that screen and receive your kidneys in Jesus name receive your healing on this up come on girl you can do it all you got to do is have mustard seed faith you know that all you got to do is believe believe in Jesus name receive your kidneys in Jesus name thank you father hallelujah so in Luke 7 Verse 18. I, I want to deal with this a little bit here because, you know, um, it's, it's, a, it's, the, uh, it's when John the Baptist was in prison. You know, he was betrayed and put in jail. And uh, in verse 18, the disciples of John showed him all of these things. And John calling unto him two of his disciples sent them to Jesus. He said, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? That's King James. In the Passion Translation, it says, John's disciples reported to him in prison about all the wonderful miracles and the works Jesus was doing. So John dispatched two of his disciples to go and inquire of Jesus. Now, here, stop just a second. They just came and told him about what Jesus was doing. John the Baptist is called the greatest among men, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But John is in prison. John's problem is not that Jesus is doing the miracles. John's problem is he's sitting in jail. Okay? John's problem is he's sitting in jail. He doesn't understand why he's there. He thinks the Messiah should gather up a bunch of men with swords and spears and come and get him out. You'll see it. When they came before the master, they asked him, are you the coming Messiah we've been expecting or are you to continue to look for, or are we to look, continue looking for someone else? John the prophet has sent us to, to you to seek your answer. Without answering, Jesus turned to the crowd and healed many just turns around and heals everybody. His miracle power freed many of their suffering. He restored the gift of sight to the blind. He drove out demonic spirits from those who were tormented. Only then did Jesus answer the question posed by John's disciples. <clears throat> now go back and tell John what you've just seen and heard here today. The blind are now seeing, the crippled are now walking. And those who were lepers are now cured. Those who were deaf are now hearing. And those who were dead are now alive. alive. Brought back to life. The poor and the broken are given the hope of salvation. And tell John these words. The blessing of heaven comes upon those who never lose their faith in me, no matter what happens. Come on now. Come on. Even John was questioning. Jesus doesn't mind you questioning. What he does mind is not having faith. He addresses it right here. The blessing of heaven will come upon those who never lose their faith in me. Though you may be in a time of trouble and you're wondering where Jesus is, well, he said he would never leave me, but I don't know where he's at. God is more concerned with your faith in him than the circumstance that you're in. Guys, you've got to get this thing right. We put too much emphasis on the problem and not the answer. In this life, you will have trouble. He told us, you're going to have trouble. We're all going to, I've got trouble, you've got trouble, we all got trouble. But in that trouble, do not lose your faith. Do not lose your faith. Amen. Would you ask him to sit, please? Thank you. Do not lose your faith in God. You've got to come and you've got to set yourself that no matter what happens in this life, 
I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to remain faithful That's right. to him. And I'm not going to give up hope in anything. I'm, not, I'm just not going to give up hope. Okay? This is the message that Jesus was trying to give to John. Now, Jesus purposely turned to answer the question. <clears throat> he didn't say anything. He just turned and demonstrated it. <clears throat> so that they could go back to John and give him an eyewitness testimony. And this would put to rest John's questions about his own misunderstanding of the kingdom of heaven and the purpose of Jesus in the earth. The Jews thought that they were going to have a king right in with a giant army and run them Romans right out of town. That was their idea of a Messiah. But instead, he came as a little baby. Born in a horse stall. They could not believe. Well, why would God send a baby in a horse stall? This doesn't make any sense. We want a king with brilliant colors and shiny armor, and he's going to drive the Romans out. That mindset was a part of Jewish culture. They were looking for some king to ride across the mountain. But it didn't happen. They said, God sends a baby. <laughs> of all things. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? You looking for bells and whistles? You looking for a big trumpet sound or something to float in out of the sky? Or are you looking to the child. Mm. See, in Christianity today, we have this delusion that's been planted in the church by the enemy. <clears throat> that somehow that God is just going to just zap and deliver us of all the troubles and all the social injustices and all of the ideologies of a socialist government. We have that idea. Guys, that ain't going to happen. No. Amen. That's right. The Bible says in 2 Peter, in fact, Adam quoted it this morning. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says that God has given us everything we need yes. pertaining to life and godliness yes. through Christ Jesus our Lord. So why are we looking for other things? The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 1, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Not your mama's faith, not your daddy, not your brother, not your wife or husband. Our faith, my faith. I have a faith in Christ who is the author of my faith. We have to bring it into perspective and get honest with ourselves and with the Father. And accept the responsibility that he's yes. given to us. Yes. Yes. Quit trying to blame everybody else for your problems. <laughs> it's me, Lord, standing in the need of prayer. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. I humble myself before you. I ask the body of Christ to pray for me. Yeah. Humility is the key to the anointing. Yeah. 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 You want more of God? You have to humble yourself more. When the bullets start flying, what do you do? Duck your head. Get low. So when people start accusing you or persecuting you, what do you do? You stand up like a turkey and bark back at them? No. You get low and quiet and humble and let God deal with it. Amen. Well, in the Midwest, in Kansas and Tulsa, Oklahoma, we used to live out in Oklahoma, and they had tornadoes out there. Well, I'm from Florida. We have hurricanes. They're different. <laughs> tornadoes that get on you quick. Hurricanes, you got a week to prepare. 
So, so we're out at we're out at Bible school, and they had a day when they taught us about tornadoes and what to do. That's pretty awesome. Huh? And the and the biggest thing that, that Miss Lynette Hagen said to us was duck. <laughs> Get low. <laughs> I'll never forget that one. So when the tornadoes of life come, you need to get low and humble yourself <coughs> down low. Submitting to God, resisting the devil, that's humble. Getting low. Amen? So most of the modern church family has been either too religiously trained instead of New Testament taught. In other words, we've been trained under men's religious organizations and not scripturally taught faith in God's word and faith in the demonstration and power that's in the life of Jesus. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. And we'll look at verse 1. It says, My brothers and sisters, when I first came to proclaim to you the secrets of God, I refused to come as an expert trying to impress you with my eloquent speech and lofty wisdom. For while I was with you, I was determined to be consumed with one topic, Jesus, the crucified Messiah. Amen to that. I stood before you feeling inadequate, filled with reverence for God, and trembling under the sense of the importance of my words. The message I preached and how I preached it was not an attempt to sway you with persuasive arguments, but to prove to you the almighty power of God's Holy Spirit. For God intended that your faith not be established on man's wisdom, but by trusting in his almighty power. Hallelujah. Those are words that you can take to the bank. They pay big dividends. The Apostle Paul knew that the gospel is not only words unless it is a spiritual demonstration of power to back them up. The Apostle Paul, I'm going to say it again, knew that the gospel is only words unless it is backed up by demonstration and power of the Holy Spirit. Go to Mark 16. What did Jesus say? Well, let's go find out. Mark 16. And we're going to look at verse... Let's start verse 17. Mark 16, 17 says, And these miracle signs will accompany those who believe. They will drive out demons in the power of my name. They will speak in tongues. They will be supernaturally protected from snakes and from drinking anything poisonous. And they will lay hands on the sick and heal them. After saying these things, Jesus was lifted up into heaven sat down at the place of honor at the right hand of God. And the apostles went out announcing the good news everywhere. As the Lord himself consistently worked with them, validating the message they preached with miracle signs that accompanied them. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 <clears throat> that's you. Amen. That's you. Church, that's you. Amen. That's you, that's me, that's the good news. Signs follow the believer. Believers don't follow signs. Amen. Hallelujah. I remember when I was younger in my Christian walk, I used to go to every conference on the planet. I mean, I would go to, we went to Pennsylvania, I mean, everywhere. We would go to every conference. Look at, look at, look at. Seeking, 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 knocking, knocking, knocking. Wanting God to do something special in us. Now there is a truth to that. There's an impartation that comes through anointed men and women of God. But the truth is, is that we were looking for signs. We were looking for things that should be following us instead of them follow, us following them. And the Lord kind of corrected me in about 1999. And he said to me very simply, he says, you're a sign. Yes. 
I said, what? He says, I put you in the earth to be a sign and a wonder. Oh, it was starting to sink in. I began to understand Mark chapter 16. I began to realize that the body of Christ has got it backwards. Lord, bless me and my four. We need more. No. What I began to see is, I'll make you a blessing that you will be a blessing to others. Yes. See? Isn't that what Abraham's calling was? He says, I will bless thee, and you will be a blessing to others. And all of them who bless you, I will bless, and all of them who curse you, I will curse. Amen. That takes care of the enemy. Our job is to be a blessing. Our job in the earth, our assignment, is to be a blessing everywhere we go. Everywhere I go, I take him with me in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, glory to God. So I'm standing in the produce section of Publix. I love that little place right in there. You can get people cornered in there. Yeah. And there's two clerks standing side by side. They're, one of them's got cucumbers and the other one's got bell peppers and they're loading the shells, you know. And I just walked up to the middle of them. You're a little too close. I said, I know. I did it on purpose. I just wanted to let you know. I patted them on the back. I said, you guys are a blessing. I really appreciate you keeping these shells stocked up so I don't have to go to other places. Huh? Okay. You never know whose day you're going to make with an encouraging word or blessing. Church, the only way we're going to change our community is to let them know Jesus is in us. We've got to do that. We've got to start being a blessing. You know, uh, Bill Johnson uh, was, on, I got some of his teaching stuff, and I was listening to something. I can't even tell you what it was, exactly what he was speaking on. But what I heard him say is that when he came to Redding, California, <clears throat> he went to the local commissioners and the people that you know run the county and stuff. Mm -hmm. And he went he went into one of their meetings one time and he said to them, you know, he, he raised his hand, they, they acknowledged him, you know, how you can go sit in the commissioner's office and and uh, he says, uh, I just want you to know our church is praying for you. And anything we can ever do for you, don't hesitate to ask. We're here for you. And he kept coming. And he kept coming to these open sessions of the county commissioner. You can do it here. And uh, they kept coming. Finally, they started to acknowledge him. And now the church and the community are working together hand in hand. See? The walls that we break down through love is an amazing thing. And Jesus <laughs> broke the walls down. He was a wall breaker. He was a partition remover. He didn't bring division to everything. But he brought unity to the Jew and the Gentile alike, to all who will believe. He brought that unity together through love. He healed them and loved them. Amen? That's our job. That's our simple assignment. Just heal and love everybody you run into. Even the ugly ones. You know, the ones that cut you off and blow their horns at you. Yeah. They're just stressed out. They don't have no Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Go to Luke 5, please. And this is where I want to spend a few minutes <clears throat> and going over this. Not Luke, John. <laughs> I did it again, didn't I? John 5. I wrote Luke and I met John. 
John 5 and verse 1. And we're going to read this out of the Passion Translation. It says, From Galilee, Jesus returned to Jerusalem to observe one of the Jewish feasts. Inside the city, near the Sheep Gate, there's a pool called, in Aramaic, the House of Loving Kindness. Now, the King James says, the Pool of Bethesda, surrounded by five covered porches. Hundreds of sick people were lying under the covered porches. The paralyzed, the blind, the crippled of them, waiting for their healing. For an angel of God periodically descended into the pool to stir the waters, and the first one who stepped into the pool after the water swirled would instantly be healed. Now, <clears throat> this was a, uh, a divine intervention of God for the people in that city who were blind and halt, withered, and needed help. And Jesus goes to this place, and he sees all these people laying around. And he says to one of them, he says, and when Jesus saw him lying in there, verse 6, he knew that the man had been crippled for a long time, and Jesus said to him, do you truly long to be well? The sick man answered, sir, there's no way I can get healed, for I have no one to lower me into the water when the angel comes. As soon as I try to crawl to the edge of the pool, someone else jumps in ahead of me, and Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your sleeping mat, and you will walk. Immediately he stood up. He was healed. So he rolled up his mat and walked again. Now Jesus worked this miracle on the Sabbath. Say that with me. On the Sabbath. When the Jewish leaders saw the man walking along carrying his sleeping mat, they objected and said, what are you doing carrying that? Don't you know it's the Sabbath? It's not lawful for you to carry things on the Sabbath. He answered them. He said, well, the man who healed me told me to pick it up and walk. <laughs> what man? Who was this man who ordered you to carry something on a Sabbath? But the healed man couldn't give them an answer for he didn't know. Yet know who he was. Since Jesus had already slipped away into the crowd. A short time later, later Jesus found the man at the temple and said to him, Look at you now. You're healed. Walk away from your sin so that nothing else will happen to you. Now the King James says, Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. So what was the result of his, in, of his crippled uh, life? Sin. Jesus told him. Okay? The man went to the Jewish leaders to inform them, It was Jesus who healed me. Praise God. Now, first I'd like to point out that the miracle of the healing took place on the Sabbath that the Jews kept. We know that was Saturday. In a Western culture, we keep our Sabbath on Sundays. Okay? But uh, this was done purposely by the Father that uh, <clears throat> through Jesus in order to defy the religious traditions and man-made religious rules. Men want God to respond to them through their own ideas and rules, and God just won't do it. Now, Jesus heals this man purposely on the Sabbath to make a statement that physical healing of the human body is just as holy, just as necessary as the rebirthing of the human spirit. Church, the healing of your body is just as a holy sacrament to the church and holy and necessary as the rebirthing of the human spirit. Why? Paul taught us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and 15 that ye are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Know you not that you are the temple of God and that within you lives the Holy Spirit of God so therefore the temple should be holy? Amen. Amen. Jesus was trying to get across to the people that were there, the Jews, to show them the error of their way. But the old hard-hearted, stubborn, stiff-necked, bone-headed people would not receive him as their Messiah because they were looking for something else. 
that were sitting in the prisons of life looking for a divine Messiah who had already come. The physical healing of the human body is holy and necessary. We, the church, at times do not place enough importance on the body as we do the spirit of the soul. But the Apostle Paul teaches us that we are not correct in that type of thinking. If your body is sick, if your body is crippled or broke down, you're not going to do what you need to do to fulfill the plans and purposes of God for your life. You're going to be out of commission. Amen? Amen. Your body needs to be whole so that you can move about the planet. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I don't know anybody in this room that can fly. <laughs> so you got to have legs. You got to have feet. You got to have a heart pumping. You got to have lungs breathing. You got to have a mind that's working. Your blood system needs to be totally restored and healed. Uh, by the way, I just forgot this, but I just got remembered, reminded. There's somebody in here, you've been told that you need to get a physical. Go do it. Go get some blood work done. Get a physical done. It's past time. Go get it done. Amen? Amen. Don't be afraid of what you might find out. It's with knowledge that you overcome. It puts stress on your marriage, your family, your finances, and your life in general when you're sick and broke down. I know that for a fact. My mother-in-law, unfortunately, had a carbon monoxide poisoning. She accidentally left her car running in the garage. And um, during a very violent thunderstorm in Venice, and uh, she lowered the garage door. She was soaking wet. The dog ran out. She had to go get the dog in the rain, and she was soaking wet. And she ran back in the house and forgot to shut the car off, closed the garage door. And in the morning, about 9 o'clock, my wife's brother went to her house and found her dead on the floor in the bathroom. In rigor mortis. The dog was upside down on the living room floor. And... Uh, through a divine miracle, God saved her. And for eight years, we had her in our house. And or for four and a half years, we had her in our house. And then after that, prayers of the saints had, had re, she had re, it miraculously recovered. And I know what it is to have people around you that are sick in body. They can't move. you got to take care of them. I know what that is. And I'm just saying to you, because you need to take care of the temple, please. Whatever it takes, get that temple cleaned up and get it, get it right. Pray and ask God to heal your blood. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Deuteronomy 17, 6 declares that. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Get your blood checked out. And if there's anything out of order, work on it. Get it right. Amen. So that you can live a long life and that he can show you his salvation. Amen? Ask Brother Bill. He'll tell you. He's a testimony right here. Given a, given a bad report, prostate cancer. So he went after it. He's healed today. Tell me. Hallelujah. God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion. He's the God of order and decency and peace. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So on top of that, God doesn't want you sick. All right? His will is that you and I are whole, spirit, soul, and body. Another point I want to make this morning is Jesus in Luke 5 and verse, or John 5 and verse 6, he asked the paralyzed man a question. He says, when Jesus saw him there lying, he knew that he had been there a long time. This is the King James. 
He said unto him, Will you be made whole? Now, the Passion Translation says, Do you want to be healed? Well, that was a kind of a strange question to ask. He was already there <coughs> waiting for the stirring of the waters. So, yeah, he wants to be healed. But Jesus was trying to get him to refocus. Not on the waters and not on his inability to get down to the waters because I have no man. <coughs> oh, I wish my pastor would pray for me. I have no man. Are you listening to me? He was trying to get the paralyzed man to focus on who? The healer. Him. Jesus. He wants you to get your eyes off of the exterior and onto him. Now, in this ministry, we have nothing against doctors. We agree with them. We have nothing against exercise and diet. We like it. We have nothing against vitamins and supplements and medications as long as there's wisdom involved. That's right. We have nothing against that. Because some of this stuff is designed to help the immune system until it can run on its own. Amen. That's not you can say. In fact, we like doctors. We like working with them. We like to talk to them about Jesus. Because they know that they're not the healer. If they're totally honest with you, they will tell you, I only treat the symptoms. Something else takes care of the healing. You know? Faith and medicine are starting to collide. Yes. Yes. Big time. Yes. <clears throat> you know, I, back when the pandemic started over a year ago, I said to the congregation, I said, we don't have a health care crisis, we have a faith crisis mm -hmm. yeah. in this nation. We put so much trust in science and medicine that we've left out the healer the author of our faith. But not here. Not in this house. Y'all get your eyes on me. Not in this house. Okay? But in this house, we point you to the healer. And it's not about boasting. It's not about patting myself on the back. It's where we're at. It's our calling. It's our purpose to help you get reconnected to the healer. Amen. To get reconnected to the Father of grace. Yeah. <clears throat> that you may receive everything that you have need of in this life. Yeah. I'm absolutely convinced that everything you have need of has already been established. Yeah. All you really do is reach out by faith and take it. Yeah. Amen. 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 I remember being in Honduras in 2003. When Hurricane Mitch came roaring across Venezuela and top of South America, and right when it gets to Honduras, it turns south. It's going to come right through the middle of Honduras. Well, and we're there. There's 31 of us there, and we're on the beach <laughs> of all places. But we had no idea a hurricane was coming. They had told us before that the hurricane was turning north. Well, they did. It lied. It came across and turned south. So 31 of us held that hurricane off for three days, fasting and praying. The wind was so strong that the sand was blowing through the screen windows. And there are no glass. It's just screen. The sand was piled up three to four inches. The whole room was full. At night, we had to sleep with sleeping bags on top of us to keep the sand from piling on top. And then in the morning, we would just shake it off. Three days, we were like that. Couldn't get out, couldn't get in, just stuck. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we prayed. 
and the hurricane came right up to the coast of Honduras, like let's say this is Honduras, it comes right along here like this and it stops right when it gets to the coast and it did this. Went due north. Now, well that was just one of those, no it wasn't. We dug in. Literally dug, dug in. That's a metaphor. We dug in. And we said no to it. The Honduran government called it an absolute miracle of God. They were expecting 10,000 people to die. Because when they get a lot of water, you can ask Rafael, who lives in Costa Rica, that water comes off that mountain so fast, it just washes everything out to sea. Everything. Houses, cars, people, everybody goes to sea. There's no place to run. God is faithful. And he will take care of you in the midst of a hurricane. He will take care of you in the midst of trouble. If you're sick in body right now, if you have an infirm, he will take care of you. All you have to do is ask. All you have to do is invite him into your problem, and he'll come and make it right. Why we don't ask, I don't know. But he will have, He will come. Amen. Final scripture, Revelation 22. Worship team, come on up here. Hallelujah. Boy, I'm getting you done five minutes early. How about that? You're still not going to beat the Baptist to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. That was just a joke, guys. Okay. Revelation 22, 17. It says, And the Spirit and the Bride... What do they say? Come. 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 Right. Come. Come. It says, Come, says the Holy Spirit and the Bride in divine duet. Let everyone who hears this duet join them and say, Come! Let everyone grip with spiritual thirst say, come. And let everyone who craves the gift of living water come and drink it freely. It is my gift to you, saith the Lord. Come. Freely. Freely. Doesn't cost you a thing. Maybe you're, maybe it costs you pride. What's pride? But a fleeting thing that uh, has no power, no destiny. And so I just want to ask you, while the worship team prays, now if you need to leave, quietly. Um, and those who want prayer uh, for any kind of infirmity, doesn't matter what it is, any kind of issue, I want to lay my hands on you and pray over you with anointing oil. I will need a few strong men to help me. And uh, worship team, you guys ready to sing? Yep. Praise the Lord. You can stay and worship with us. You can come forward and get prayer. Huh? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It's all good to me. Thank you, Lord. So, Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for everyone in this house today. I thank you for the blessing of God, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and the blessing of of the word that says the inheritance belongs to us. And so today we receive that blessing and that inheritance. And one of those pieces is divine healing. We recognize that the body is the temple and the holy place of God. So today, Lord, we're believing that you're going to do a miracle in every temple in this place. And everyone is going to be totally restored, spirit, soul, and body. Once and for all. In Jesus' name, yeah. amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you.